Now, if I'd like to go in and begin to manipulate these images and move them around and size them, one of the things I have to be careful of is sizing them so I keep them in proportion. Of course, if I select and hold down my Shift key, I can then scale these and they're always going to scale in proportion. But sometimes I accidentally squish them vertically or horizontally. Now it's like, oh my gosh, how do I get it back? And by the way, how do I actually know if an image has been scaled out of proportion? Well, there's a couple tricks that you can find out how that's happened. Okay, we're going to show you how to fix it. Up here in the control bar, I see the name of my file. It's RGB mode and the resolution. Now the resolution has two numbers. Okay, this tells me that this image has been scaled non-proportionately. If I see the resolution, the pixels per inch as being one single number, then I know it's the right size. In fact, I'm going to undo this a little bit and you can see that now that's my resolution. But the second I go in and I scale it disproportionately, I get two numbers. Now I can also find out this information at the bottom of the links panel. When I click this twirly to open up, I get all this information here as well. It not only tells me the resolution, which is very important, but it tells me that I have two different resolutions, one for the width and one for the height. And it's like, oh, how do I fix that? Well, you can spend a lot of time trying to go back and fiddle and fuss, trying to get these numbers to be exactly the same here and the resolution and keep going back and forth and try to figure it out, okay? And it's kind of hard to do that. So that's not what we're gonna do. If I sense, you know, or if, if I have actually scaled this disproportionately and messed up here, or I find that it is scaled disproportionately, I'm gonna go to the links panel drop down menu. I'm gonna choose placement options. And here in the placement options, I can go in and I can preserve the file dimensions, which is gonna bring it right back to the size of the file that I was using um, in those proportions. I can fill my kind of my bounding box proportionately, or I could fit my bounding box proportionately. And in this case, if I fit it, it's going to become shorter because it's gonna fit the width of my bounding box. I'm simply gonna go back and say, return this back to my file dimensions, and then I'm going to clip to the bounding box and clipping to the bounding box is basically going to resize it and the bounding box is going to be kind of our invisible picture frame. So I'm gonna click okay. Okay, there it is. So now we've got this all nicely done and is no longer scaled out of proportion, which is great. So that's something that I always like to look for when I'm going in and scaling. Now, an interesting thing is if we go in and say I have, let me see this little pouch here. If I take this image, which I cropped, so it automatically became embedded. If I accidentally scale this disproportionately and then I see my, you know, my resolution is kind of off here and I go in to use that exact same trick of the placement options, it says, hey, wait a second, no, no, no you can't go in and your placement options. And the reason why is because this is an embedded image. So in order to be able to fix this issue of a non-proportionately scaled image, I would have to go into my embedded image. I would have to unembed the image. I would have to save this back to my hard drive. Then click save. It will then restore that image link it back in here, and now I could then go in and I could then scale that proportionately. So a lot of little tricks on these things that you could do as well. Now you'll notice that all of my images here are going to be horizontal or vertical, and you know, maybe I want something with rounded edges, okay? And how do I do an image with rounded edges? No, I'm not gonna go into Photoshop and do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this trick that I absolutely love. So I'm going to draw a container, and it could be any type of container, circle, square, triangle. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw this container, it's got rounded edges, and then I'm going to take one of my pictures, I'm gonna to go to the bottom of my toolbar, and I have draw normal, draw behind, and draw inside. I'm gonna click the draw inside. I'll see those dotted lines going around my container. And then I'm just going to select any one of my images here and I can go under edit and I can copy this if I want to leave the existing image, I'm going to choose cut. And then select this container and I'm going to choose paste. And it's going to paste it directly inside 
by container. So now I basically have a picture frame that I can move all around inside my container, which is pretty cool. Okay. Now, once I paste this inside the container and I go back to my image, I'm going to go back and click on the draw normal mode at the bottom here. And then my image is inside my container. Now, when I move this around, I'm going to have my container and my image inside there. So how do I get inside this container? Well, I'm going to select the container. I'm going to go up to my control bar and I'm going to click on the edit contents, which is going to allow me to select that picture. And now I can move that picture around. I can scale it. I'm going to make sure that I hold down my shift key and I can leave the window frame or basically the frame of the picture in place. And if I'd like to move the frame itself, I'm going to go back up to my control bar and click on the actual path itself. So I can then edit the path. Maybe I would like to make it taller or shorter or widget the corners a little bit more and move that around to get that balance. So that's going to select my actual content and this is going to select my picture frame. Pretty cool. Now, if you ever want to release this out of this picture frame, all you have to do is go under object, go under clipping mask and you want to release. It's then going to give you your picture back and it's going to give you your frame back here. And that's a way that you can go in and put images into different shapes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.